And hello and welcome back to the Women of Wine Country. I am your host, Terry Wells Brown. I'm the author of the series Women of Wine Country with the newest release out, Beauty and Betrayal. So if you haven't had a chance to pick that up yet, please go do so. I am so very thrilled to have another author on with me today. Her name is Dawn Nelson, and she is somebody I am actually collaborating with. And our books in our collaboration are one right after the other. So that's going to be kind of cool for us. It certainly is. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Hi, everybody. Hi from Scotland. <laughs> yeah, oh, I forgot to mention that exciting yes. part that you're from Scotland. Well, just in case you're wondering why I've got a weird accent, that's, that is where I'm from, from Scotland. I live near Loch Lomond, actually. So it's 10 minutes drive away from here. It's beautiful here when the weather's yeah. nice. Well, how is the weather hot. today? Uh, it was lovely this morning and now it's got very overcast so and it's a bit blowy as well but yeah so what's the, for, what's the so, forecast for this week it's supposed to be nice so fingers crossed you yeah. know because Scotland is not known for its good weather <laughs> I, <laughs> heard, <California. laughs> I heard I was actually had planned to take the family to Scotland a while back and somebody told me um that if you go in August, you'll still need to have a sweater and uh, sweatshirts and... Absolutely, yes. Well, what we say is in Scotland, we have four seasons it's four seasons in one day. So you can get up in the morning, be lovely and sunny and warm, and by nighttime, it's raining and miserable and practically snowing. So, you know, always better bringing a sweater. <laughs> and, uh, and a rain mac and an umbrella, Wellington boots. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. It's on my bucket list to come. That's where my family is I, from, Scotland. So I can't wait for you to come. I know we talked about this before. Your family's from Ayrshire and so are mine originally. So it'd be really nice. Yeah, I can't wait for you yeah. to come over because obviously we'll have, we need to meet up. My husband's going to want to uh, visit all the whiskey manufacturing facilities. There are plenty, plenty here. Yeah, you can do a, a tour actually of, of all, all the whiskey uh, distilleries. So I'm going to want to go see the castle so I can write books. Oh, loads of those as well. Loads. So, there's a castle. So, have that. you ever written a, a Scottish book? A book about the history of Scotland or anything? Yes, I did actually. So, um, uh, about 10 years ago, I brought a book called um, A Children's History of Glasgow. I actually was born in Glasgow, but brought up in uh, the sort of south of it in a village. And, uh, and it's all about, obviously, the history of Glasgow from its early days when it was a Roman outpost right up till nowadays. Um, but my children's trilogy, which is a uh, novels, a set of three novels, uh, Dark Hill, they were actually set in Scotland as well. I decided I wanted to, to write what I, I know. And I thought, well, there's not very many adventure books written for kids in Scotland. So I set it here and, I, I, and it, they've got all over the place in Scotland, really. So, but it's places I know as well and places I like. It's it featured in the book. So I suppose, yeah, I have in that sense as well. I've also written about Scottish history there as well. And my current book that I've just brought out in indie publishing, um, it's the sequel to Dusting Down Alcudia, which is set in Mallorca. But the second one is actually set in Persia in a castle, talking about castles. Um, and, it's set, and it's basically a hunt for Jacobite treasure. If anybody knows anything about Scottish history, they'll know that um, Bloody Prince Charlie was the, the, the new pretender and wanted to get his throne back for his father, blah, blah, blah. Came down to Scotland, got some of the tribes, from, uh, the, tribes the clans from... Um, the north of Scotland from the Highlands and they fought the English basically. So they were the Jacobites and the, the English and, and some Lowland Scots as well um, fought against them. But anyway, he, he lost, but there's rumoured still to be um, treasure that was sent over by France hidden in Scotland somewhere. So I thought that would make a great premise for my book. So that's, that's what they're looking for is this French treasure, this Jacobite treasure. So I am with you oh, on here. Wow. <laughs> that's great. So, um, so let's go back a little bit. So you're a mother and you have how many children? Two children, one who's 12, that's my son Xander, and also my daughter who's 15, Emma. She's actually named after the Jane Austen um, heroine, Emma. Oh, cool. And also, and also, I hate to say this, I not hate to say, I love saying this, Ross and Rachel's baby from Friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge Friends fan. <laughs> that's great. That's awesome. So, um, so you started your career not as an author, but as a journalist. No, I, I always wanted to write. I knew from when I was about seven or eight, I wanted to be a, a writer, but uh, I didn't know how to go about it and how to get into it. So I decided then, well, the next best thing is becoming a, a journalist. My father um, worked in newspapers all his life as well. He was a compositor. Um, 
uh, which means he was setting out all the pages, etc., and using the hot print initially and then going into the computers. Um, and so I became a journalist at the age of 18. I joined a local newspaper and I worked in newspapers for about seven years. Um, and I did uh, what they call shifts in, in some national newspapers. I worked for The Sun and The Sunday Times. And it was then I decided I really didn't want to be a journalist anymore. A lot of my time working for The Sun was spent chasing like famous footballers all over Scotland. So yeah. Uh, so then I went into public relations. I became a press officer for the Scottish Labour Party um, and uh, was part of the team that helped Tony Blair win, you know, when he first became a prime minister in 1997. So that was a really good fun job. Um, and after that, I've worked in, in public relations for local authorities and, and laterally the NHS. I was with the NHS for 16 and a half years. Um, NHS? The NH National Health Service. Sorry, okay. I forgot. <laughs> Our National Health Service. So I was doing things like their website and newsletters and press releases and, you know, anything that needed written, you know, like um, leaflets, things like that, posters. Mm -hmm. We were, all, myself and my colleagues would do that kind of thing. So it was a busy job, but um, yeah, it was good. Good fun. Good. And so that took you directly into your press relations, your public, uh, public relations job? Public relations job, that, that was the public relations job was the, the NHS one and working for all oh, that. A local authority or a council you know so before but I mean during that time I, I first met my husband in 1999 um, and before that I wasn't really confident in my writing I felt really scared to actually share it and show people it so but he was really really encouraging um, and made me send off things and, and that's how I eventually got Dark Hill was um, published I sent it off to a, a, a publisher in 2006 and it was actually um, launched and published in September 2007 um, I was very heavily pregnant at the time with my son, so so technically he was there, but you know. Um, and, and this is the kids' adventure fantasy novel, right? The trilogy: Dark Hell, Dark Dark Hell, Dark Hell Resurrection, and uh, Dark Hell: The Last Battle. You can actually get it in America, or you could about a decade ago. It was called um, the second one was called The Witch's Revenge, I think. I can't remember what the first one was called. Um, they're different covers. In fact, if you just hold on a second, I can show you. Oh I've sure. You want to see them? Hold on. Yeah. Two seconds. Wait, hold on. They're in my bookcase somewhere. Uh, where are they? And this is what happens when you do a live interview all the way around the globe. Done. Sometimes you have to have an intermission. Oh, good. Here we go. All right, I'm back. <laughs> right, so anyway, let me show you. This is what it looks like in the Scottish version. Okay. And this is the, the American version. Ooh, so where oh. would somebody be able to find these? You were traditionally published. Oh, so. oh sorry about this. Um, still available in America, but you must see it on Amazon. Oh, 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 right, enough. Oi, oi, down. Right, so anyway. There's also, these are the two, the two. Sorry about this. <laughs> Never I'm a dog man. This is the American version. This is the British version. So. I love the American cover on that. Hold it back up again. Wow, that's gorgeous. This is one of the baddies. Her name's Mephista. Uh, she's one. Of the, she's a witch in it, which is really bad. So pardon me. And this is for like a, a a teen. This is a tween book, right? Twelve. It's twelve years. Uh -huh. So the first book. This one was the one that won my award. So I won the Royal Mail Award for Scottish children's books um, in two thousand and eight. Um, I was dead pleased because the year before J.K. Rowling had won with one of her Harry Potter books, I was like, oh. So you this. are in good, good company. Yeah. I know, it's fabulous. So um, here's the German version. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. French version. Gorgeous. Um, I've, got, I've got other versions as well, but I'm sure you don't want to be too. So you're internationally selling and you're an award winning author. Uh, yes. I don't know how much so much now, but I was 10 years ago. <laughs> you still, it still it still works. I still work. I still I'm still writing books. Yeah. So um, as I said, um, dusting down Alcudia was um, was uh, I'd actually gone to Alcudia and uh, in Mallorca, which is um, an old Roman outpost. It's almost as a modern part now, but the old part is really ancient. It's lovely. So that kind of it started me off writing dusting down Alcudia, and I've, I've just brought out the sequel to that as well, which is available on Amazon and a lot of other like Barnes and Noble and stuff as well. I've just gone wide with it. So. Um, yeah, so busy, busy. I'm still obviously with you guys. I'm, we've got our collaboration, which uh, I don't want to say too much about because I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to say at the moment, but it's so exciting. 
I was watching we'll talk that about season. that towards the end. How's that sound? Okay. So, but you just had another book come out. You're, you're the second in the, um, the Jacobite share. Is that what it's called? Jacobite share. Uh -huh. This is the one to do with the Jacobite treasure. So, um, I said, I'm a big fan of Outlander. I don't know if you know that Outlander. Yeah. Everybody knows I Outlander. I mean, like the TV program, hello, you know, but anyway, so man in a kilt, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, I'd read the books years ago and I'm a big fan of them. So, um, so it was kind of inspired by Outlander a little bit. Um, and also, in fact, I am Scottish anyway. So um, I thought I'm going to write it somewhere I know. Uh, and it's a, per it's a Persia castle. We've got castles everywhere in Scotland. I mean, everywhere you look is a castle, you know. I can see a castle, actually, from my garden. There's one right across the river. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, because I, I live in the River Clyde, but I live in a place called Cardras, which is kind of near Helensburgh. I don't, people would probably don't know it, but... Right across the, the um, river from us is a place called Port Glasgow, and there is Newark Castle is there, and just up the road is Dumbarton Castle. So, that's yeah, great. That's it's great. great. So you'll you'll have to take a picture and post it sometime in their group. I will do. You can't really see it very well. I mean, it's quite far away, but you can see it. <laughs> you can still see it. Nobody in America can see a castle from their garden. That's okay. True. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> So we're all jealous of that. <laughs> yeah, so it's New York Castle. So that's probably where New York, your area, New York. And is it New York? It's right about that area, isn't it? New York. Somewhere around there. You know the where, area? New, is? New York. It's N E W E R K, New York. Newark. New yeah, we would say New York. Um it's probably named after the castle. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm Part sure that's true. Yeah, apparently that area, there was a village there and it was called New York Village and it was New York Castle. So there's a, a good chance that's what it's called after. I'll send you a picture. So, it doesn't look nice now. But... So oh, I sorry. see that you have several books in the queue too that you're working on right now. So we just had one that came out. So I'm going to just kind of go back and rehash this a little bit. So the Dark Isle, am I saying that right? The Dark Isle books? Okay. Yes, Dark Isle. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's Dark like Isle Dark Resurrection, the, and then the yeah. final battle. Um, you have the Children's History of Glasgow, Dusting Down. Right. Dusting Down could, yeah. Uh huh. Yep, and then the Jacobites share, right? Yes. And that just came out, and I did share that in the Women of Wine Country book club, but Thank I'm also going to send it out on my newsletter, which should go out this weekend. So, um, yeah, we've got to take care of each other. And you're, you're, I started reading your books. You had sent them to me in PDF, and I started reading. And nothing is keeping my interest right now because my crazy brain. But I actually got to invest a good 45 minutes and came out going, okay, all right. <laughs> so I would suggest your books to anybody because it was a nice, it just grabs you. So it was Thank really you. nice. Thank Appreciate you. it a lot. It's not sweet but it's not hot and heavy either. They're I'm not into sweet. I'm not really into no, sweet. No, I'm into, no, um, no. yeah, I like books that pull emotion and or, or captivate me. So, yeah. um, and then the books that you have to come, uh, you have a murder mystery set in Scotland in the 1920s. Is that the one you were talking about? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, it's about 80,000 words at the moment and I'm still editing it. So, um, I don't know if it'll ever come out. I don't know. I'm not quite pleased with it yet. You know how you know when there's a book and you just not, it's just not right. So I'm leaving it aside just now. It's just not right. So there's that one. And then there's a sort of fantasy I've written for teenagers. Ooh. It's currently called Dark House Beach, but I don't think that's what it'll be called. <laughs> it says young adult fantasy set in Fife or Fife? Yes, Fife. 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 Okay. Fife. And, it, and it's current time. Yes. And then you're, you also got a children's history of Paisley book? Yes. Now that came about because one of my friends is an illustrator. She's very good. Her name is Mandy Sinclair. And uh, she's done lots of illustrations. She's, she did a children's book for um, uh, Burns Cottage, you know, Rabbi Burns uh, Cottage down in Ayrshire. So she's done, she's done a book aimed at, um, aimed at children, all about Robert Burns' life, or Rabbi Burns, as we call him here, who's our, our bard. Um, and so... It was her that came to me. She works for the libraries over in Renfrewshire, where Paisley is. And she said that they are opening a new museum and wouldn't have a good idea to do a children's book to go along with the opening. So that's what we're doing just now. That's so wonderful. It's, yeah, it's all about the history of Paisley and but from a child's point of view. So we're keeping it quite simple. 
she's doing yeah. the illustrations and it should, it should be great it'll be fun that's so great I've read, I've read, I didn't know you were that. doing it I yeah, know that's... never came up so yeah we all <laughs> I, I think writers usually have four or five irons in the fire so yeah that's do. great congratulations yeah so hopefully I, can, and, I mean we're just going to do it anyway and uh, self-publish it ourselves if, if we're yeah. hoping the local council will pay for it but if not we're doing it anyway you know um, or we'll apply for a grant or something. So now, are your first books that were published by a traditional publisher, when do those rights revert back to you? Uh, apparently, I asked my publisher not long ago, and he said they're still in print, which I don't think they can be because it's ten years. But apparently, you can still buy some of the books on Amazon, so they must still be in print. So. But when do you get to have, take control back again? Well, when, when I ask him for them, uh, when he when they go out of print. It's what he said. So they that's the bit, oh, I don't know about Scottish law, but I know in American law you have to have a definitive time. They can't just say, Oh, whenever we decide to stop printing them. Well, this is what he's saying, but I, I think now it's been a decade now, so I could possibly, you know, go to a lawyer and ask them back and get them back properly. I, I remember would go through your contract too. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah. I'm a member of Society of Authors in Scotland, so I can get them to look at the contract. They've got law lawyers working for them, so um, it's always good to be part of a, a you know, a, an author's organization like that. Absolutely. I would, I would encourage you to, um, re, you know, rebrand them, yeah. bring them up current and republish. Oh, I, I think you're right. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Right. Right. I, I am almost like I would discourage people from, I mean, there's always a good side of being a traditionally published author, but I think self-publishing is really the way to go right now. I would agree, and the reasons for that are is that I, I know some people who have not been published yet, but they're desperate to get um, traditionally published because they think that's better. But having gone down both routes, I actually think self-publishing or indie publishing is much better. You've got more control. You can get things done much quicker because if you are, um, say, uh, what do you call it, traditionally publishing, it can take years for your book to come out. Yeah. Uh, and um, and you're still having to do all the um, promotional stuff around it as well. So you're actually better, I think, hiring the people to edit it and do the cover and all the rest and do it properly. Um, and just and, and de publishing it yourself, it's so much quicker. You get far more um, control over, over your end product. And like right. I say, you're going to be doing all the publicity anyway because your publisher, who's a traditional publisher, will not do your publicity for you unless you're someone really famous, So, which I'm not. So... So I think, yeah, this is the way I'm going as well. It's much better. Good for you. Well, keep me up posted. I'd, I'd love to help promote your book over on this side of the pond. And likewise for yours. Well, obviously, Thank we're doing our, our CDs. We'll all be publicizing that. Yeah, I know. So, hey, let's do this. Uh, let's. We're almost towards the end of our interview, but I, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. First, I'd like to mention your husband, who passed away in 2016. Yes, Ian. Yes, yes. And um, what was his name? His name was Ian. Um, he was my best pal and love of my life. Unfortunately, he died of cancer. Um, and uh, yeah, he was really, really supportive of me in my writing career, which was fantastic. And uh, yeah, we still miss him, obviously, but you know, we just got to keep going. Um, so my children were very young at the time and just unfortunately it happened, but these things happen in life, unfortunately. So, but yeah, yeah his spirit lives on in me. I'm determined I'm going to be a, a you know, very successful author. So good for you and and do wow. it in his memory so that's wonderful absolutely. yeah absolutely and, so and what kind of cancer did he die from it was bowel cancer bone bowel 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 colon yes, cancer bowel. yes colon yes okay. yes it also so, has other complications as well so but anyway so why don't we do this? Why don't we, once we get our first set, our first series under us, why don't we do an anthology in his memory and make all of the proceeds go to colon cancer research? That sounds lovely. That sounds lovely. I'm sure they would appreciate that. Because um, the, the NHS, the health staff and uh, were fantastic. There's also um, people here who, um, kind of Marie Curie nurses who are here, which is like a, it's like a charity that, they come at night time if you Ian was lucky enough he, he was able to die at home. So but the Marie Curie nurses came at night to let me get asleep, which was fantastic. So they were really good as well. So So here we call that hospice. Well, we have hospices too, but you have oh. an option to be actually be looked. What happened was he opted to stay at home. 
so they gave us a, a hospital bed and all sorts of gadgets and things. It meant we, we set up in the living room here and it meant he could die at home, which was really, really good. That's what we both wanted. He, he really wanted that. I wanted that as well. It just meant our last few days together were really peaceful and there wasn't people interfering. There wasn't the noise in a hospital or hospice. And he, he was in his own sort of area, I suppose. So it's interesting that you say that because the next book I'm writing in my Women of Wine Country series starts off with um, my heroine's uh, husband is dying of cancer and he's in hospice at home at the house. Right. And um, so he, I've been writing about that for the first three books. We will mention her, Francesca, and her husband yep. is at home. And well. um, so the fourth book is her story. <laughs> Hey, we're on too. I get it. And the more you yell, the more they're gonna bark, right? No, Sorry, they're so noisy. It's ten ten years. Okay. So, um, what I'll do when we post the video is I'll post a link to the books on Amazon in with the video as well. And so you, you'll have the ability to share it. I'll, I'll send you links of where it's going to be on a uh, YouTube and on Facebook. But um, so let's wrap it. Is there anything else you want to talk about before I take us into the Sisters of Sin? Uh, no, I want to say that if you need any advice or anything like that about your book about the person who's dying at home, just give me a shout and I can answer some of your questions if, if that's what you want. Absolutely. I absolutely, yeah, yeah, I absolutely will. Yeah, I absolutely will. Yeah. Right, so, so let's talk about that because that's really exciting. I know. <laughs> so the way that Dawn and I met is because I started a group called the Romantic Suspense uh, Writers Group with an idea and I got it from a 20 books to 50k group, which is a mega group for writers. Um, and in some of the other genres, they build world building and um, all, different authors will write in a series. I hope I'm not giving too much away. But no. um so I thought, well, why can't we do this in romantic suspense? So, and it was kind of tricky getting the right girls together, wasn't it? So, so we had some, we ha I think the initial ones, we all were really enthusiastic and all came together really quickly, but, but there's a smaller people who came who maybe didn't quite fit, quite fit, you know, I don't, I don't know, what's your impression of it? I think, I think, yeah, mostly we fit very well together, actually, and we've got similar sense of humor as well, which has been great. Yeah, I want to say the original nine, which is the ones that we ended up with, we're like solid, like we're a solid yes. writing group. And I yes. think that when we pull off this first series and get excited about the next and the next and the next, I like having the original nine and our pen name that we're using is R.S. Wild. And yes. um, she's going to have her own Facebook page and her own website and all of her own stuff. But each of us will be writing as, so it'll say T. Wells Brown writing as R.S. Wild or Don Nelson writing as R.S. Wild. Right. And the first series we're writing about is, how many books is it? Is it 14? 14, yep. 14, 14 books. And um, it's called Sisters of Sin. And it is about a group of assassins, female assassins, based on sins the current sins not old biblical sins but modern day sins yep and so i got the first book and i think i got the 10th book maybe it's the ninth now we've kind of moved things around and yep. then you've got the four the second book and, and the do you know i can't remember <laughs> so we each have two books uh, we do have two books each year so. i have insolence which has been a lot of fun to write and if i wasn't so crazy in my head um, would be just so fun to write a, from a killer's point of view. Um, and she's kind of got a dark sense of humor, you know? And um, <laughs> then my, my second book is Sloth, which most people would think, of, oh gosh, you know, that's going to be hard to write. It is not. It's going to be so easy to write because basically she just doesn't want to put any effort out to anything. <laughs> so she kills with the least amount of effort possible. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> well, and so what's good. yours? I mean, our greed, uh, which I'm just wor I'm working on just now, and this, the second one is Gar, which is forcing people to do things that they don't want to do. I think that's yeah. So I'll check that. But yeah, so I've greed started. I'm really I was writing it earlier on and just loving it. It was so fun, really was. So um, she's just killed her first person. So it's fun, and, isn't it? <laughs> great. See if you get any sort of frustration. You're like, I'm just gonna kill someone. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, and here's the thing is they're romantic suspense, yes. but there are dark romantic suspense. Yes. So there's yes. a happily ever after at the end, if you can believe it, through all the murder and mayhem and killings, there are a happily ever afters given at the end. Correct. So, um, so it's, it's going to be fun. I'm super excited to, uh, to do it. <laughs> and, and the love interests are all very handsome, aren't they? Of course very they handsome. are. Because we've got and, a Pinterest and, and page up now. Huh? We've got a Pinterest page up. A Pinterest page which where you can look at photographs of what we look, think are sort of handsome right. uh, the love interests are. That's so. right. I've got to send, um, send uh, Lila in my, my Pinterest pictures. I actually yeah. have a lot of them on my phone because I use visual to trigger, you know, writing, but I just yeah. haven't sent them to her. She's our, she's our Pinterest savant. <laughs> she's very good on the IT, isn't she? She's great, Lila. So they're, you know yeah. what? Everybody in our group is, is amazing. And just it's not just me, me and American authors. We've also got an Australian girl as well, haven't we? Who's, who's uh, taking part as well, which is fabulous. Yeah, we've got Australia and we've got the U two of you in the UK. Yes, Both yes. of you are in Scotland, right? Right, yep. Yes. Um, and then we've got me and um, Michelle in California, and we have Sam in um, Las Vegas. Yep. And then the rest of the girls on the East Coast, I think we've got Massachusetts. Where, who do we, where are they at? Do you know? I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I know the I, East Coast somewhere, the three of them. So. Yeah, they're on the East Coast, and I know like um, – Ivy is writing in Washington, D.C., and right. Boston is one of them, and so yeah. I don't know. So we're really good, because, I mean, we're setting it, we're not just setting it in America or Scotland or wherever. It's all over the world. These, these assassins are, assassinations are all taking place, and the girls are all different backgrounds, different ages, and, yeah, it's really good fun. It's been I know, it's great. Because we've been talking to each other on Facebook uh, about our 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 characters and it's been crazy hasn't it? it's been so funny it's, so it's good. good though i mean i feel like we're developing skills that are going to help us in our writing for forever yes absolutely yeah and especially with collaborating as well and we're all very supportive of each other and it's been great since obviously with the lockdowns going on with coronavirus it's been great because we've been supporting each other through that as well so it's been fab it's been a great experience so far we've only really started yeah, it really has. And I want to just talk a little bit about the coronavirus because the Sisters of Sin was not our first idea. Yeah. Yeah, our first was. idea was baddies, Russian bad scientists, were going to <laughs> release a virus onto the world to control right. the world's population. And then the coronavirus hit. Yeah. So we decided I mean, we were not using that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had like logos, we had everything developed. We were pretty well into it. We had a badge for our, our organization that was going to tackle the, these people, um, yeah. the characters, baddies written up, but hey, maybe sometime in the future. Just table it. Doesn't mean we can't come back to it in 10 years when everybody's over this because nobody's going to want to read about it. No, no, that's the beauty of being a writer. You can table things and, and reuse it later on. So I've, I've got about two or three books that I've shelved years ago that I will go back and rewrite at some point. They just went Oh, that's great. Again. Yeah, so I have been writing for years. So I think you might be our longest writer, our old, you know, the person who's been writing the longest of the, of yeah. the original nine. I don't know. I haven't thought about that. But I've certainly been writing since the late 90s. Yeah. It makes me sound so old. <laughs> it's okay, I'm the oldest in the group, so it's all right. You can say that to me. Yes, we're, we're, we're both fabulous, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think Joe and Heather both probably have been writing, but I just think they're, they're younger than we are. I think that they yeah. just don't have the years. So I, I would be interesting to find out. Yeah, we'd be actually. We should do a wee poll in the group and find out who's been writing the longest. Yeah. And who can award themselves a prize. I know. Hey, that was a really good idea. <laughs> just, just so your, your um, people who are viewing this know, one of our writers, Lila, um, gives herself a prize every time she hits a certain amount of uh, it's, it's words, isn't it? It's so many thousand words, she gives herself a prize. So, yep. yeah, so I've decided to do that as well. So I've got my list of, of uh, when I write 5,000, 10,000 words, right up to when I finish the book. So there's some jewelry in there, there's some perfume, you know, so I'm doing it. It's very yeah, I think it's a great idea. I mean, giving yourself more uh, prizes as when you hit your markers, that's a great idea. I told my husband about it. He was like, 
just another excuse to buy yourself some stuff, which he's Don't right. <laughs> he's and not wrong. It's, it's, it's for motivating you for writing. You, it's, it's actually good because it'll earn you more money in the, in the future, hopefully. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, it's, so, yeah. Was it's, yeah. You know, it speculate and accumulate? Yeah. So, um, so is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers before we sign off? Um, I can't think of any at the moment. I think, I think we've covered all bases at the moment. So, um, no, just say thank you for having me. It's been lovely. And hello, yeah. viewers. we'll be back at some point. Um, and I hope that when our series comes out, that you all enjoy it. I'm sure they will. I'll have you oh. back on when the series comes out. I'll, what I'll do is that. as each book releases, I'll have that author on. And we'll do, we'll do a series of videos about it. Brilliant. So for those of you who might be interested, you can reach Dawn um, at, it's, is it D-A-N-E-L-S-O-N-A-U-T-H-O-R.com if you'd like to okay. sign up for her newsletter. And she it's also has a Facebook. D-A-N-E-L-S-O-N-A-U-T-H-O-R.com. D-A-N-E-L-S-O-N-A-U-T-H-O-R.com. Yep. No D-A-N-E-L-S-O-N-A-U-T-H-O-R.com. Yes. Um, if you, uh, obviously you author some, offer some author services as well. You have, uh, yes. Nelson author services.com as well. Yes, I do editing, but most of it is book formatting actually. So, um, part of my job in PR was to lay out newspapers and magazines. So it's been really good, good skills to learn because I, I lay out my own books as well. So uh, yeah, I do book formatting. So that's wonderful. Well, that's a great resource. So that's danelsonauthor.com for if you want to sign up for her newsletter and yes. nelsonauthorservices.com if you have any needs to have your books formatted. You can find her on Facebook at author da nelson, Twitter yep. da nelson author, uh, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Goodreads. You're there. You're everywhere. I'm, everywhere. I'm not yeah. on TikTok. Though. I'm too old for TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, I don't do TikTok either, although I've got people sending me videos from TikTok all the time. Me too. Me too. It's mainly of women uh, leaving the house, getting all done up, to take their bins out because <laughs> they're not allowed to go anywhere further. <laughs> I know. We're all, I'm so tired of being in the house. I'm ready to get out. Me too. Me too. Not be long. Not a couple of months, hopefully, and that'll be it. Yeah. I don't know how long. All right. Well, thank you. Can... Thank you oh, very thank you much for me. coming on. I really appreciate it. And um, for those of you who might be interested, you can find all of my videos on YouTube at the Women of Wine Country, on the Facebook uh, media and event page for Women of Wine Country. We have a Facebook group, Women of Wine Country, and you can sign up for any newsletter on www.womenofwinecountry.com. And with that, I'll say adieu. Thank you so much for joining us, Dawn. And I will leave a link for all of your books in the video. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.